Hello everyone, it's Maria and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be reacting to Avatar The Way of Water. I have watched it before, I watched it when it was in theaters, and if you want to know my thoughts fresh out of the movie, you can check out the video that I will link up here somewhere. But now we are going to rewatch it together and I'm going to be commenting on specific scenes. This is very Star Wars-y. The March-like music. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I remember when I watched this, this had a huge impact on me. Visually, I think this works so well. Oh, I have goosebumps. Every time these magnificent views appear, I have goosebumps. But this could definitely be on Earth. We have views that are equally epic as that. Those are just some, some rock formations. So, like, so cool. Mangroves! Mangroves are super rich ecosystems, actually. They are well depicted here. They look pretty much exactly like this. They live in brackish or salt water. Mangrove trees can be really tall, like up to 60 meters, but their roots are never this big, unfortunately. They are super rich ecosystems. They serve as nursery to juveniles from several different species, and they are very important for coastal protection as well. So cool. Pandora is so beautiful. The world these people created is just... I read an interview with James Cameron where he talks about the Midkaina and how they were inspired by a lot of Polynesian cultures, by different cultures who have really strong bonds to the sea. For example, the Maori, the tattoos they have are clearly Maori inspired, but they are not only representing Maori culture, they have a, like an amalgamation of cultures in the Midkaina, which I found kind of interesting. The Plesiosaurus! <laughs> Ilu, what were they called? Ilus? They are clearly Plesiosaurus inspired. Plesiosaurus is just an order of marine reptiles that existed until like 60 million years ago. They were carnivores and they kind of looked like this. I wish I had a Plesiosaurus. Oh, wait a, and wait a second. Do, did I see her? I wonder at which point they would just... Oh, she does. Did you see? Those are nictitating membranes. It's like a third eyelid, basically. Land animals have it many times to keep their eyes moist, so a lot of reptiles have it. But there are some marine species that also have them, like sea lions, for example, to remove debris like sand from their eyes. Cool. I didn't remember they had them in the movie, actually. That's a cool little detail. They have these really cool tails that allow them to swim fast and steer really easily. So, of course, these are reefs. They were based on Earth's coral reefs. That's very obvious. Mangroves and coral reefs do occupy the same region-ish, more or less. They do occur sometimes in the same area. This could almost be Earth. We have sponges, corals, some feather star looking creatures over there. Giant zoontids, which are kind of related to corals and technically closer related to hard corals than soft corals are, but they are not really corals. It's complicated. On Earth, they are smaller than that though. <laughs> what is that? It's like a mix of puffer fish and lionfish. And actually, that long mouth looks like the mouth of a forceps fish. And forceps fish have long mouths because they use it to suck out coral polyps from their skeleton. Cute. I would be like her, like I would forget to breathe. And I want to place your Saurus friend so bad. It's like half crocodile. Like a gar. Half gar. Half flying fish. Oh. Those definitely look like Gorgonians. So there are two different types of corals, soft corals and hard corals. Hard corals always produce a calcium carbonate skeleton, while soft corals are instead supported by small calcareous spear-shaped spicules called sclerites that add rigidity to their soft bodies. Another really important difference is that hard corals have a symbiotic relationship with microalgae called zoocentelli, while many soft corals don't. The zoocentelli, just like plants, perform photosynthesis, which means they need light to survive. They also provide most of the food to their coral host. Without them, the corals bleach and eventually starve. Soft corals, on the other hand, don't necessarily need zoocentelli to survive, since they can feed by capturing phytoplankton and other particles transported by currents. Yeah, corals are fascinating. I'm so glad that they managed to, in these few seconds or few minutes of underwater footage, 
they could display such incredible biodiversity that somehow reflects coral biodiversity on Earth. I love that. I'm a sucker for bioluminescence. I saw it for the first time in Indonesia this year in the sand, created by little unicellular organisms called dinoflagellates. Unfortunately, if they are bioluminescing, it's not necessarily a good sign for them. It means they are stressed in some sort of way, but it's still very beautiful. Bioluminescent animals! Yes, that's what we want. So cool. Bioluminescence seems more widespread than it was previously thought. There are even some sharks that can bioluminesce. Bioluminescence is produced by light-producing organs called photophores, and it can be produced either by the animal itself, via light-producing chemicals, or via bacteria that live in the photophores, that also then themselves have light producing chemicals. And many, many, many organisms have it, especially in the ocean. Around 80% of bioluminescent organisms are in the sea. And it seems quite widespread across different species from dinoflagellates, as I just talked about, to sharks. Creating your own light can play many roles, especially in the deep sea where sunlight does not reach. It can be used for interspecific communication to attract prey and repel predators, or for really any type of communication in the dark. While there are several explanations as to why certain organisms bioluminesce in certain ways, there's still a lot we don't know about this phenomenon. And I'm really glad that in the movie they just took advantage of how cool it looks. What assholes. But now my favorite character appears. Bait ball! That is a mix of a dinosaur slash stranger things. Demagogon, or whatever the name was, and a silicant. My favorite character. Oh, I hadn't noticed before, he has sea lion type tail. Sea lion whale hybrid. He has three pairs of blowholes, which is how they breathe. Whales are mammals and they breathe air. They can hold their breath for very long periods of time, especially sperm whales and other types of whales. It, I know. The Cuvier beaked whale is the whale with the record of the deepest dive. Oh, imagine. <laughs> like the little eye looking at him. <laughs> the little eye. The two, the big and the little eye. No. <laughs> Why is this so cute? <laughs> I want a friend whale, imagine. Corals on Earth also emit light, but it's not through bioluminescence. Actually, it depends. Bioluminescence is the creation of light by oneself. Fluorescence is when the body re-emits light that comes from another source. Many corals are known to glow when hit with UV light, so they fluoresce because they are not creating new light, but re-emitting some of the light that reached them. However, there are also some coral species that create their own light, especially in the deep sea. We are still not 100% sure why they do either one, but one of the most accepted hypotheses for coral fluorescence is that it acts as a sort of sunscreen, protecting the corals from harmful light. Recently, there was also a study that suggests that coral fluorescence might also be used to attract prey in darker parts of the ocean. Oh, they're in some kind of algae forest now, like kelp forest. Kelp forests do not exist in the same areas where coral reefs do, because kelp forests are usually located in colder waters, while coral reefs, at least tropical coral reefs, exist in warmer waters around the tropics. Wow. It's really hard to analyze another animal's intelligence because we cannot communicate with them. That's one of the big difficulties of studying animal intelligence because what we perceive as intelligent might look different in different species. And I love it that in Avatar they made the Tulkun smart and sensitive and potentially smarter than humans and that one of the indications of that is that they are nonviolent. I like that message and I love them. Oh, I know, I know what happens. Those are echolocation sensors. How they navigate. Yeah, so they also use echolocation. But uh, I don't think whales, like humpback whales, baleen whales, use 
echolocation. I'm pretty sure only toothed whales, like dolphins, use echolocation to navigate. The animals basically emit a sound that bounces off objects returning as an echo, which they can then interpret. It's how they see underwater, basically, and how they navigate underwater. And there are many marine mammals that are highly affected by sound pollution. Sound pollution from boats, from nearby construction sites, can have strong effects in marine animals' behaviors. Even though there's a law, we still don't know about that, but it is a thing that happens. This is hard to watch. I was really disappointed that the only marine biology and bi biologist in this movie has the role he has. That is what's paying for everything here on Pandora now. Even your research, ain't that right, Dr. G? That's why I drink. He doesn't like his role either. This is an interesting portrayal of marine biologists. As a marine biologist here, I feel like I have to say something. Hi, Maria from the future here. I know what I wanted to say, but what I said made no sense. So here is the concise version of what I wanted to say. I think I was a little bit too harsh on Dr. Ian in my previous video. I actually think that his depiction is a very human and realistic one when we compare to what really happens in the real world. There are researchers, biologists, ecologists, that work for not so environmentally friendly cooperations and many of them have their research funded by said cooperations. However, this doesn't make the researchers that work for these companies evil in any way. Many of them actually accept these jobs with really good intentions in mind. They want to help as much as possible to diminish the impact that many of these corporations might have by helping them be more environmentally sustainable. Why am I saying this? Dr. Ian's character is a really good portrayal of someone who is somehow caught in this cooperation world he has his research funded by this, the activities happening in Pandora. He's clearly not okay with them. He is not comfortable with what is happening there, but he is still working for them. We don't have enough information to know why that is. I would really like to know his backstory. <laughs> Maybe we'll get more of him in Avatar 3, but we don't know his motivations. We don't know why he is in this position. Maybe he has a kid at home that is very sick and he needs to pay for his medical bills. And this was the only job he could find. Maybe there was another another evil scientist who wanted this job to do evil things and he found out that there was an evil scientist who wanted to do evil things and said, no, 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 I will go instead because I'm not an evil scientist who wants to do evil things. <sighs> I don't think that's the case, <laughs> but that could be, I don't know. I actually think there could be a cool and interesting character arc for him in Avatar 3. I don't know if there is, I don't know, I have no idea. Even though I would have wished that they could have made a marine biologist more heroic. Uh, next time, please, ha, huh? okay. Back to old Maria. Go, let's go, let's go. She's the best. Ow! Ah, I forgot that! I liked him. I think she would do it too. Poor kid. Poor spider. It's gonna have some issues, man. And the bioluminescence saves the day. Yes. Ah, oh, laddie. <laughs> Why did you save him? Gonna be interesting conflict. Underwater tree. There you go, that was it. If you haven't watched it for some reason, go watch the full version of the movie. It's uh, really beautiful. Even just for the visuals, it's absolutely worth it. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you all my Patreons over on Patreon. If you want to help support this channel and what I do, you can check out my Patreon or you can check out my merch store, my children's book, or any of my affiliate links. It does help the channel a lot if you can do any of those things. Otherwise, just watching is fantastic and I really appreciate it. Comment whatever if you have any questions and let me know what you thought about the movie. Thank you very much and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!